record. And it's recording. Okay. Uh, all right. Do we all see that? That's the, that's the next thing you ask yeah. me, Zoom, right? Can you all hear me? And then can you all see my screen? <laughs> It needs to be Zoom bingo. I was probably a Zoom bingo. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> so, um, so kind of want to give you a little bit of a background of the of the program, and and as I said, we'll we'll walk through what the year typically looks like. Um, you know, several of you are you know said you're going to put in your classes. I'm talking about clubs, um, and it really is designed to be used in in any of those. Um, um, you know, methods. Um, and uh, we'll also talk a little bit about, you know, some of you are interested, you know, especially your courses, um, interested in, in in adding some cyber stuff. So we'll talk also about some additional resources. I don't know if the literacy stuff is sent our cyber. Is it on the website? The cyber liter literacy. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And we'll also walk through the website, which is our support structure, and we'll walk through Discord, which is our um, other support structure. <laughs> Um, there we go. Um, so I've already said all that. Um, uh, Innovate IT is, uh, um, again, the name of our, um, our program. Um, and my computer is being laggy. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, so really this is all about increasing, uh, students' interest in, in IT. We define IT extremely broad. Um, and so some of you mentioned it, it's in coding classes, et cetera. You know, this kind of gives a framework for putting coding into something that students can latch onto as opposed to writing hello world over and over again. Um, and uh, so really this, is, this program is, re it's really about fun. We, we emphasize that this is the inquiry-based learning. Um, um, so if you don't have a deep, background in in IT or cyber or any of those is really designed to provide the students with what they need um, so they can go learn it on their own and you'll find out that they'll they'll latch on I'll latch onto this and and uh, sort of run with it a um, little bit of history uh, this program we actually started all of this back in 2006 with our high school cyber defense competitions um, working with the technology association we then transitioned into what was called it adventures that ran um, fairly strong up until the pandemic um, and uh, um, we still kept it going in some form um, we then rebranded it, um, looked at different um, venues. Uh, the programming venues has alternated back and forth over the years, and we've really kind of landed on, just did it all by itself. Okay. Um, uh, we landed on, uh, on game design, um, and then uh, we've refreshed robotics. And so we'll talk about the robotics quite a bit. Um, and a slight change even from what was probably put together when you put your scale up, which we think is, a, is an exciting change um, in robotics. Um, and even if you're playing, I guess, cut note right now, even if you're, you know, you several of you said, I'm in cyber, I'm in this, uh, you'll get all the all the materials and students can play in the other, you know, play in the other venues and, and play with, even if you have a cyber team, they can still play with robotics and other, and other things. It's kind of a way to have fun. Um, so again, uh, we originally set this up as clubs, but again, back in 2006, almost nobody had a computer science class. I don't think anybody had a computer science class in 2006. Um, and again, many of you mentioned that you're going to incorporate this in an actual class, which, which again, this fits very well for, and I don't know why my thing seems jumping forward. Mm -hmm. Um, one percent is some timer. Anyway, um, so the the um, program structure is that we will be providing um, learning materials off of our website, and we're also going to provide some milestones so that um, it helps keep students on track. Uh, especially when we look at um, 
game design and especially cyber cyber you're going to have to kind of keep your kids somewhat on a on a pathway if they're going to compete in the uh, in the cyber defense competition and so that's really designed to follow a little more structured format uh, robotics is probably the least structured of the of the uh, of the learning um because it's really a lot more playing around with what the robot can do and then game design again working towards designing a game they're going to have to uh, follow a um a path in order to be able to get get to that at the end um and uh as part of this we have something called the it showcase um and so um we're gonna we use these there's some terms we use throughout the throughout the program we talk about uh, the primary challenge um as i said this is inquiry-based learning and so um, they're going to be work during the school year. They're going to be working towards something. Um, they're going to work in game design. They're actually going to uh, end up writing a game in Unity. Um, the first part of the year, they're really going to start to learn Unity and, and the various components and pieces. And Ethan will talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, in robotics, the first part, you're going to learn how the robot works and how to solve various problems with the robot. We'll release a primary challenge. Um, and uh, kind of a heads up on the primary challenge. The, you'll see the robots in a minute. They're little dogs. And we're going to, the primary challenge will be to run an agility course with the little dogs um, autonomously. So um, cyber defense, the primary challenge is to get ready for the cyber competition. So that one's pretty easy. Um, and then in April, um, we invite everybody to come to, to Iowa State on a Saturday uh, for the IT showcase. That's where they show off what they're doing and they compete in, in uh, some real-time challenges. So game design will um, do some um, modifications to their games. Robotics, they'll be doing having their robots solve some problems in real time. And then cyber defense, they're actually gonna participate in the competition, so. Um, uh we provide a lot of stuff um we have um uh, free online educational materials for all three venues um and these are free to use anywhere you want so they don't have to be used within the program um and free to share i mean they're 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 readily available to anybody um if if you need to try to find an IT mentor, uh, this is probably much more true in, in uh, cyber defense. We can work with you to help find that. Um, you'll all get a robotics kit. We'll, there's all sitting on the table right now. And we'll, we'll email. We'll, we'll mail them. We can't email them. We'll mail them out um, um, once this is over. Um, for the cyber people, um, we have a cyber security playground. And you all have access to it. So even if you're not in cyber and you want to just play around, your kids want to play around with it. Um, and we'll talk more about this, but this is a place that they can safely play cyber without having your IT folks get upset with you. Um, and uh, so they can actually look at various tools, methods, um, and we walk them through that, even even doing some sim simple pen testing against their networks. So um and then uh, Discord is what we uh, are going to be setting up for the, for you and the students um, as a way um, for you to communicate um, with us. And we found in the past that actually the students, even across schools, will will uh, communicate with each other and and, and solve problems. Um, so I'll let Ethan talk a little bit about game design. Sure. Um, yeah, so basically what we're looking at for game design is a full Unity curriculum. So Unity is a game engine. It's a very popular game engine. And while it might be a little daunting at first, we basically walk students through from knowing nothing about it all the way to making some sort of functional game. And the good thing about game design is it's totally free. You just need a computer that you can install the software on and actually run it through. So what we will provide for you is a curriculum. We've got a full curriculum on the website that we'll look at later. And this will just be what your students follow. 
we set out some challenges for them, but then we also link them to some other online resources as well. So we'll heavily use the Unity resources made for beginners. So they'll have easy access to videos, content, just about everything they need to get a, a handle on things. And then of course the primary challenge will actually be making a game from scratch. So in January, I'll go ahead and release the scenario. So that's gonna include all the information they need to make a full functional game by April. So they're gonna create this interactive game using Unity and then using C Sharp, which is another coding language that Unity uses. And then of course, we're gonna judge the games as well. So we'll bring judges in. There's actually a full game design group here at the college. So I'd like to bring in people from there. And then they'll judge the games based on creativity, style, quality, coding, all of the fun stuff. And then essentially everyone gets to play everyone's game. So we get to share, we get to have fun, we get to play some games, which is usually the fun part. So they'll bring the game to the competition, we'll judge it and give out awards and hopefully it'll all be a fun time. It will be, it was, has been in the past. It has been in the past, so. Um, and then so uh, robotics. Um, so what we have, uh, since we, between the time we submitted the scale up proposal and now we have discovered a really, really cool robot um, that you'll all be getting. Um, and uh, it is a, uh, it is a small, let me turn him on. Although we turn him on, he's going to make do things. But um, they see that. A little bit over. Come on, wake up. He's in a sit position now. But uh, this is if you've seen the Boston Dynamic style dogs. This is modeled after the Boston Dynamic dogs. So they walk, they sit, they jump, they run. Um, they're programmable, fully autonomous, um, and uh, they're programmable. What's kind of fun about them is uh, if you have students that are brand new to coding, uh, you actually can start with a block language, um, uh, very similar to, to Scratch, um, but they are fully programmable in Python, and that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on. Um, is having your students um, actually program them in in uh, in Python. They have a full IDE. Um, they can um, you can connect to them wirelessly. They also can be connected with a phone app, so kids can just you know you can play and demo the the dogs through a through a simple phone app, um, and uh, they're really they, they're a lot of fun. They're also voice activated. Oh, we. We're still figuring out exactly how that works, um, but you can talk to them. Uh, they have some uh, sensors, um, and uh, but you can really get into some very complex programming and complex tasks with them. So their their beauty of them is that they you can start out simple um, and quickly move into very complex programming um, with them, um, and so. Um, you'll need a you know computer to run the software. Um, the dog you'll be getting, um, and uh, we'll provide a curriculum. Um, the company that produces the dog is in the middle of redoing some of their curriculum. Um, it, sh it should be out very soon. Um, so on the website, there's not a lot there for the dog, but but um, there will be soon. Um, by September first, we're or fourth or whatever the right after Labor Day, uh, we'll we'll have everything up there. So, um, but you can play with the dog without the without the um, um, programming programming piece. Um, so again, just like before, uh, we'll have a curriculum to walk through, um, and we'll have um, you know various um, uh, resources, um, and then as I said, uh, we'll. Um, release the primary challenge, um, which, as I said, we're, our discussion has been to have the dogs do agility. If you're not familiar with agility, that's where the dogs run and jump and go through pole, weed poles and teeter-totters, and we won't quite have all the agility pieces. Um, but basically, it is a, a, a 
how fast can the dog go through a set of obstacles? Um, and uh, again, it'll be programmed autonomously, so it's not like it's under under remote control of any form. So um, we piloted the dogs last year uh, when we when we had uh, the IT showcase. The kids who came and played in robotics played with the dogs, and and they had a lot of fun um, um, with them. Um, and so we think these are kind of a great way to get people excited about programming and robotics. Um, um, bless her cute. They also make noises. Um, we have one of them we play, Mary has a little lamb. I don't know. Anyway, so they're just something that's really fun to play with. Um, then, uh, the, uh, uh, third venue is cyber defense. Um, and as I said, you know, as mentioned, uh, you just need, uh, uh, computer to access the playground. It, it accesses through a web interface, so you don't need any special software. Um, so I guess, we're not, yeah, we don't use remote desktop anymore. That's an old oh, thing we didn't mm -hmm. take out. Um, dog's gone. Oh, Al moved the dog. Okay, the, the dog does remote voice, con so it sits there in a meeting and will arbitrarily do things, so it's kind of fun. So what we'll provide is a uh, have we have a full cybersecurity curriculum, and actually what we'll we'll show you is we actually have two, um, well actually technically three cybersecurity curriculums. Um, so we have the curriculum that focuses on the goal of becoming able to participate in a cyber defense competition. And that is, I believe, 17 modules. And it, it really lays it out to get the, the students ready to uh, play in April. We have a security literacy curriculum, um, which will point, which will show you that is a set of 30, I believe 30 modules um, with a full um, uh, curricular um, workbook, you know, all of lessons, everything you need. That's really designed to teach cybersecurity basics to anybody. And you can cherry pick out of that. Um, I, I invite you to use that for anything, whether it's part of this program or not. Um, that was developed out of a, a, a different project. But again, we have videos on, you know, everything from how, you know, malware works and, and how email works and email attack, you know, so it's a it's a full-blown curriculum that you can take pieces out of. Several of you mentioned that you have a you know, uh, programming course or a, or a uh, course here and there, you know, in, in uh, software, um, there's pieces you can easily pull out of that. And we'll point you to that. Uh, we also have a, an even more basic curriculum really designed at a middle school level, uh, more of a, our cartoonish style. Um, and um, so those are additional things that you, that you can do beyond just the, um, the cybersecurity to the cyber defense um, curriculum. Um, and as I said, you'll have access, full access to the playground. Um, and there they, students will end up setting up their own computer systems, firewalls and you know everything else. They'll be able to run security tools against them. Um, basically anything they do there can't hurt anything else. So, we aren't worried about them hurting. Matter of fact, they can't even really get to each, you know, each other. So the schools can't even get to each other. So they're there's no no fear of them doing something that will end up in the news. Um, and um, so again, everything focuses around um, that um, um, and so uh a little bit about the cyber defense competition, if you're not familiar with them. Um, the students play what we call blue team. Blue team are the defenders. So they're going to spend all year learning how to set up a IT infrastructure um, and how to secure it. And then about a month before the, the showcase, they'll actually be given access to the what we call the competition network, which is an IT from a user interface is identical to the to the playground. Um, there they'll set up 
a their competition network and be prepared to defend it. Um, and so, you know, they'll set up, and I'm not going through as much detail, but basically they set up servers, um, web servers and DNS, and, and you know, these may, this may look like a bunch of, it does look like a bunch of garbage, mm -hmm. a bunch of gobbledygook. Um, but all these things are things they've learned through the 17 modules. So this is nothing new. Um, and uh, they then um, come to the uh, um, showcase and they'll participate in the, in the cyber defense competition itself. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we go through the what happens at the showcase. All right. Okay. Maybe anyway, I have the dog to come out again. Um, so um, I'm going to pause here. We're, we're going to move into what's going to be at the showcase next. But anybody have any questions, comments, you know, before we kind of move forward with the showcase? Yeah, just unmute and say something. Can the software be used on Chromebooks? For game design? For game design, yes. Yeah, as long as you have permission to install software from your IT group, it should be okay, yeah. Wait, are you asking if Unity can be installed on Chromebooks? Yes. Oh, if, that, that's not possible. Is there no local... No, a Chrome Anything Unity actually that. takes a pretty powerful computer PC to run on. That kind of okay. leads into my question. And I wondered the minimum system requirements. Yeah, because we when we use Unity, we use it on our esports computers. Oh, so you have a full, yeah. And that's obviously the better way to do it. Um Unity does have minimum requirements online if you want to look into those. Um, anything with a file, like you can run it on a less powerful computer. It might be a little awful, but for the games we're making, we aren't going to need a ton of resources. Um, well, there's so, no yeah. EXE that can be run on a Chromebook. Nothing on a Chromebook. Okay. Yeah. So we suffer from the, we don't have Chromebooks and don't know if they yes. are. Syndrome. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I yeah, I feel like I can confidently answer that no that unity okay. cannot yeah. be put on a Chromebook. Okay. Um the uh um cyber defense simply is a browser. Yeah. Um so access is is through the browser. Um the software for the uh Robotics requires Python to be able to be downloaded. Um, so again, that may or may not, it's not resource intensive. It's just, again, what, what does the Chromebook allow? Um, Chromebooks are browser-based apps only. Okay. Um, okay, so that yeah um so then for the for the dogs and this would be true of any of the pro any any year at the program i guess um, um we can look into that a little more but that that may also require it'd be a low-end computer i mean it does not take um any real resources to program the dog it's in it's in python um it, you talk uh, Bluetooth to the dog to download um, code to the dog. Um, so you would be able to use an iPad with the dog? We can, question. We can check with the, yeah. Let's do a little more research on that. We can get back on what the, um, Programming environments are available for the um, yeah we will we will check into that check with the company that makes the dogs um, uh, 
newer Chromebooks can run Android apps if it's allowed through IT, if that provides an alternative? So there is an, so there is an Android app for the for the dog. So you definitely can control the dog that way. It's just whether you'd be able to to uh, write software in in Python and do any do any more complicated than what the yeah. app lets you do. Um, um, so we will check on on um, what the I don't know, Mind Plus may have it may be an app. Might have an app. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to check on that. The, um, Yeah, we yeah. get a <laughs> Other questions? Will the side you... oh, uh, competition only be available to high school students or could middle school students compete in that? In the in the cyber competition? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, the middle school, if you have, yeah, since you have a middle school group, um, uh, yeah, there's not really a, you know, it's not really an age, age thing. I mean, you know, they can learn the, you know, they should be able to learn the materials and, uh, and, uh, and come and compete. So that's not, that's not really an, an issue, um, it's, you know, I mean, we've had, you know, it also depends how schools draw high schools and middle schools, but we've, we've had teams of, of, in essence, ninth grade, you know, ninth grade, ninth graders. So there's no, nothing reason to believe eighth graders couldn't also, um, eighth and seventh. Um, so um, there's no, yeah, we don't have a restriction against that. Um, Okay. Is there a frequency of meetings that your curriculum requires, or is it just kind of led to the interest and the availability of the organization? Yeah, the latter. Um, you know, if, if you look at it, you know, cyber is probably the one that's going to, you know, uh, require the most organization around. Um uh, Depends on the, you know, especially if all the students are brand new to it. Um, uh, it's something that that you're going to want to um, meet a little more often on. Um, or again, since it is cyber is uh, completely web based, they can, you know, you can meet you know, every once in a while and they can go do things and work together. Um, you know, we ran this during the pandemic when none of the clubs could meet. Um, um, but, uh, you know, if I look at our typical clubs that have been meeting uh, a couple times a month, you know, some of them will do once a week, but a lot of times it's twice a month, sometimes once a month. Kind of depends on this, on what the venue and how much the students can, you know, get figured out during that during that time. Um, so we don't have a set frequency. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the IT showcase, again, it's held at Iowa State. Um, it's free, we have food. Um, starts. Can't remember what time we started it. Eight. Eight. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Eight o'clock. It's here on campus on a Saturday, uh, and we try to get everybody out of here by five, four or five. Um, and uh, it's optional, um, but we encourage we encourage you to uh, to um, bring your teams. Um, and uh, 
we, you know, we, we, in here we have words of judge and so on. It's really meant to be a fun event, uh, a lot of showing off what they've done. Um, the, the cyber defense is probably the thing that is probably the most competition like. Um, and we'll go through what these all look like in a, in a second. Um, some of the questions that come out of this usually is uh, uh, typically we team size of three to six students. That's not a hard and fast. Um, um, the game design um, tend to be a little smaller just because, you know, it's harder to get six kids all working on the same program. Um, robotics, probably a little smaller too. Cyber tends to be our biggest sets of teams um, because there's enough to keep, you know, when they're defending seven or eight computers, there's enough to keep a team of, of uh, six busy. Um, you know, one, of our, one of our goals at this, during this day is that the students are always busy doing something. Um, so, uh, um, so we keep them, you know, um, so like, uh, yeah, we'll go through the, the, uh, different venues in a second. Um, again, your clubs can have more than one team in a venue. Um, and this, but one thing is that when it comes time to actually be at the showcase, it's really hard for students to be in more than one venue. Um, during the year, they can play in different venues, but at some point, they're going to really have to have to choose just because the venues keep them so busy uh, during the during the showcase that they really don't have time to pop back and forth. Um, yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> game design. So at the uh, IT showcase, so like I talked about earlier, for game design, it's essentially they're bringing the game they've made throughout the second semester of their year to competition. So they're going to bring their game. They're going to bring some computers so they can work in Unity at competition. And then, of course, any physical materials. So some years we'll have them do a presentation or make handouts for their games. Um, we've had them way in the past make their own controllers at competition. So that would be something we would provide. But it, it varies year to year, and we'll give you all the information about what you need when we know. But essentially, they're going to be asked to design a game. You won't know the detail of this game until competition. This is the real-time challenge. So this is what they're doing that day. So I'll give them a challenge for the day. They'll work on it. They'll get scored during the day. It's a much shorter-term thing. Um, and then there's a bunch of details. Those might change uh, at competition as well. So, But again, you'll know all this closer to competition as well. So, um, and then robotics again, uh, a dog, uh, something to, to drive the dog. Um, and the way the robotics is, has gone is in the morning, we, we show off what you brought. So in this case, uh, with, with doing agility, they would actually run through, um, agility courses, um, and uh, you know, compare times with other teams, sort of like you do in in, in, uh, in normal normal agility. Um, and so uh, those things tend to go pretty quick. And we usually, you know, some sort of round robin, and we, you know, things that kind of keep the kids uh, interested. Um, usually, there's a lot of people watching when this is going on because it's kind of fun to watch the robots do. The right thing and it's even more fun to watch them do the wrong thing um and then uh in the afternoon we'll have them uh you know you have different ops of course or so we'll have them write smaller programs to do something with the dog um and again they won't know what that is and, until that day um and that really lets them you know try some new creative things um and uh, it's usually a lot of that's a lot of fun when we in, in all these real time pieces when we see them um, try to solve these problems and that they've just been handed. Um, and the gal who runs robotics, she couldn't be on the call today. She has actually been with the program since its start. Um, she's an IT professional in Des Moines, um, but has come back every year to help do robotics. So she's 
she's experienced in that and she'll be in the discord you know we'll talk about the communications but but she'll be in that channel to help people um and the last one cyber defense um and again uh basically you you're going to bring your um, uh, laptops um any you know whatever with wrote with a um, um browser um and uh we're going to, ahead of time, we've provided you a scenario, and they will, as I said, about a month beforehand, they'll start setting up on what we call the competition network. Um, during that time, that setup, our, our cyber defense staff are actively engaged in supporting your students to get ready. Um, so they're, at that point, the support kind of really ramps up as they're starting to get down to actually building individual systems and interconnecting them um and um so they'll have all that set up that's before they show up in Ames um and then when they're here uh basically they're they're going through this cyber defense competition they're blue um they're defending um when the competition starts we have red team we have the bad people um and they will start to try to attack um, the um, um, students. Um, also during that time, we have things called anomalies, which are tasks to keep the students distracted. Um, if you've never um, seen a um, seen one of these, how many of you probably have, they're, you know, the students, it's really amazing we run the, we run six competitions a year for various, levels college community college etc you've never seen a, a group of students so focused as they are when they're doing this um and so uh it, it's it's really you know they have a lot of fun um as i said red these are it professionals grad students they play the role of, ha of hackers and they try to they try to break into into the network um and the students then, um, you know, detect them, kick them out, repair the damage. Um, and so this is, you know, this is real world. So your students interested in cyber, um, this is something that uh, we have a lot of companies that support our cyber defense um, competitions at various levels. And you know, we've had students who participate in high school competitions who go out and get internships as high school students in cyber. Um, and uh, so uh, this is, you know, this is real world hands-on um, activities. Um, I think so, we, there's been some, you know, same with the, with the, um, uh, game design people. We've had some of our clubs with game design where those students have gone out and gone web, to, you know, as high school students have gone out and, and gotten uh, internships. Um, robotics that doesn't doesn't tend to lead that as much, um, but the other two venues really, we've as I said, we've seen students um, go out and uh, um, um, again, um, these are kind of real world world skills they can apply. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to kind of walk, well, we'll stop and see if there's any questions about this. Then we'll walk through the website and Discord and um, kind of see where we're going. So does anybody have any questions about the showcase or or any new questions that showed up in general? I have a couple of questions. Will these yeah. slides be shared? Sure. As yes. a future reference. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. then um, I don't will we be seeing a sample of the curriculum today or not necessarily? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's next. Oh okay. oh, okay, perfect. Yep. Would you make me co-host as well for the discussion? Oh, man, so you got it. Well, well, I'll tell you what, man. Give a mouse a cookie. <laughs>
You just proved that I could run this. <laughs> Right. Okay. So I'm gonna. What are we gonna? Let's see. We're gonna give him back the flyer or the the handout. Handout. Yeah, I'll send that with the slides. Okay. All right. Perfect. So um, to run through the. We'll do this part. The website. Uh, well, do I have to share my screen, or do you want? To you want me to drive? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I'll make how much you drive. I let you, I stop sharing. Um, so, um, yeah. So Lindsay's going to kind of quickly walk you through. And you'll have a link to get directly to this. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I can do that quickly. All right. Or actually, you have what? it if you want to. Oh, okay. so they want the link so they can follow along. Good oh. idea. Cool. I've got it if you oh, think that's harder you for you. I was like, wait. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Great. It should be in the chat if you need it. Okay, so this is the what you get when you first see our website. Um, so Innovate IT is under outreach, and then it'll be Innovate IT. And you'll see you can click on the venues. So Robotics, the curriculum will be here once we get it. Um, and then game design. You can see there's different milestones. So if you click on one of Yeah, would you actually go into the first one? milestone? I'll just show them quick. Okay. Uh, or just mention quick. So for game design, we have everything broken down completely. We have goals, introductions, challenges, et cetera, along with resources and links. But then also, if you're integrating this into a curriculum, um, I've gone ahead and mapped everything to some learning objectives. So feel free to use those. They should integrate in. I've used CSTA and then a CTE. So hopefully they're somewhat standard. And then, of course, yeah, we've just got content. Uh, recommended resources, optional resources, and then a project for some of the milestones. So, and then Cyber has similar kinds of thing. Each module has an outline, activities. Um, do you want me to go into those or? You go to one of them. See, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I have to down. It's like downloaded. Oh. Oops. You'll, you'll download like we can't see it oh you might have to share your whole screen uh, i don't know how to do um, if you click on the drop down there yep or on the share yep okay. click that oh wait click on the new share sorry and then just do desktop because then it'll share your full screen for us <laughs> uh, no problem <laughs> And then now if you write your other thing, you download it, we should be able to see it. Or? Perfect. Yep, we okay. can see it. So this is one of the outlines for module one for cyber. What else do you think about that? And then um, I already have all the information, but if you are like a new uh, organization, you can sign up by filling out the form here. Um, and then there's a page for IT Showcase. Right now it just shows 2023's information, but we'll update that. This is kind of like showing what we did last year. So it'll probably, probably be similar to uh, this coming year. And then this was our webinar that we did previously. You can download that. Um, and then I'll, we have a YouTube video kind of explaining Innovate IT a general. Um, and then, but well, we also have like a page on cyber defense competitions and it'll show all the ones we have. But 
Death in the IT page. Um, I'll also send out a handout with a bunch of links for things uh, today afterwards. Sorry. Um, no, it's fine. I'm trying to, uh, if you're trying to revive the literacy, oh no, Discord on the next slide. Never mind. Oh yeah, we were going to show literacy though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to revive. No, I know. Yeah, you're trying to. Okay. Um, Technology. Yeah, mm -hmm. real time. Real time. Like real time. IT support. Um, Any questions about the website? In the cyber defense, you mentioned there was like three different levels of the curriculum. So it looks like the cyber defense link has the full 17 modules yes. um there the security literacy piece that i think doug mentioned i'm not getting yeah. that site to load yeah, I'm assuming... yeah wait, hang on. <laughs> okay i'm doing it support right now um, okay got <laughs> it. <laughs> it, it it crashed um it which is old right it's uh, that's what happens that's what happens when you do yep. a demo and, uh, <laughs> There we go. Now, if you go to securityliteracy.org, you can get there. Okay. And then the other question you'd also mentioned, there was a kind of a more basic option for possibly middle school level. And where would we find the, the link to that? that? Oh, the same thing. It's on the literacy page. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Thank you. And we will, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just add you all to the, um, or we may just package it up. We'll get you the um, um, uh, one of my my brains is dis disconnected. Um, the uh, um, all of the uh, materials that you would you know, the course curriculum materials, learning objectives, and etc. Um, we'll just package those up and, and send them to you all. They're they're behind a, those we've kind of locked down just to just so we know who has them. They're they're free to use, but we have for the literacy material, we have a full blown, it's meant to be a semester long taught as a semester long course if you wanted to. Um, but you can pull bits and pieces out of it. So all the, the video modules all correspond to the various um pieces um and um so it re really is meant to be able to be pulled out of uh pulled apart and use pieces of it if you didn't want to run a full um, semester long literacy course um okay thank you and again that you're free to use those materials any any way you want um Okay, so yeah, I'll go back to there we go. I can zoom again. Okay, so let's jump back to stop Um. And so, um, talk a little bit with uh, about communication. There's lot, lots of ways to to talk with us. Um, things that you'll get will come um, either from from Lindsay's email or we have an innovate at IT email address that reaches several of us, um, and. Um, so that's you know if you really need to get a hold of, you know, someone, <laughs> some someone, um, in a more urgent sense, uh, the Innovate IT is is uh, is an email address that that many of us, that several of us get. Um, we're going to use uh, uh, Discord for informal communications. Um, have you all played with Discord? Not played with Discord. Um, and we'll send out a, well, we'll have Ethan walk through a second uh, uh, how we've set up Discord. Um, uh, but your students will also be invited 
to participate in, in Discord. Um, we've done this before. We've used to use Slack. Uh, and uh, we were a little leery, but the students all tend to behave themselves. Um, um, as I said, it was really a good way uh, for the students to, especially as they got down into their challenges and they'd have questions about, hey, how do, you, how do I do this in, in Unity or how do I do this in, uh, in uh, cyber? The students tended to answer each other's questions across the venues. So um, uh, the way Discord works is the links are, are out, are, have a short lifespan. So we'll send you all a link um, to, uh, to, to sign up. Um, and uh, then we'll, we'll send out, you know, periodically send out links that you can forward to your students. Um, and all that will be part of a PDF. Um, I don't know if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can go ahead and show off Discord here quick, um, just in case you haven't seen it before. And then get it through the web, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm using the actual local client, but you and your students can also access it through a web app as well. So, but it will look pretty much identical either way. So basically, it's just a very informal communication site. So it's pretty much an instant messenger. So you'll have access to, to a few channels here. So you'll have access to general. We'll likely lock that down so people can't post much in general. But then you as teachers will get access to a specific hidden teacher channel that your students can't see. So if you ever have any curriculum questions or any sort of administrative or anything you just want to keep to other teachers and to us, that would be the place where you'd put that. And then additionally, we'll have a channel for each venue specifically. So robotics, game design, and cyber defense. So as your students have questions, or even if you have venue specific questions, uh, post those in there and we'll be monitoring those regularly and be able to get back to you. Or hopefully the goal would be other students who know the answer might respond to students who are asking questions. Um, at any time, you can ping us as well. So if you ever have a question for a staff member and you want to really get their attention with a notification, you can do an at staff and then type your message and it will actually ping us. So we'll get a notification. Yep, Doug just kind of looked at his computer surprise. He probably just got something. So at any time, you should be able to get a hold of us as needed. So again, this is more informal. If you really have a formal question, email is probably better. Otherwise, just we'll be monitoring Discord uh, as needed. So, and if you guys ever have like ideas or thing, if you want another channel, if you want something else, just let us know and we can customize this as needed. So, yeah. Um, just a heads up to everybody. Um, so we are starting an esports club in Anamosa for this year, and we have a Discord channel set up, but we went through uh, a long road to get it taken care of by your IT department. So mm -hmm. just as a heads up um, that you may need to contact IT to allow all that stuff to be unblocked on your computer. Okay, that's actually really good to know. I didn't realize schools were blocking Discord. So that might be something we'll contend with and as we figure things out. So please let us know if you guys do end up having a lot of trouble with Discord, we can kind of figure out what needs to be done and go from there. So thank you for bringing that up. I didn't realize that was a thing. Cool. I think, let's see where we at. Next steps. Um, so next steps, yeah. yeah. We're at the the dogs will will be sent out. It takes Iowa State a few days to mail things, yeah. but but the dogs will be sent out. Um, uh, and I think Lindsay has your addresses, yes. so hopefully those are the right. At it. Um, they'll they'll come you they'll come U.S. mail U.S. post office mail so. Um, sign up, you know, again, the Discord, uh, most learning materials there, we're still working on the, on the learning materials for the, um, for the dog, um, and the, 
professional development stipends will be sent out soon also at Iowa State. Uh, anyway, <laughs> dealing with the dealing with the big university is always a challenge, but uh um we'll keep you posted on how that's progressing here. Um and uh um so I think I think that's like I said the um, kind of everything. Um, and uh, so, I don't know if anybody has more questions, um, and again, if there, something comes up, feel free to, to reach out. Um, I have a, I have a question. Oh, and I'm getting feedback in here, but I didn't. What's the professional development stipend? Is it like a CEU? No, there's a. I can't remember the dollar amount. There's a. Oh, one twenty. There's you'll get a check. Oh. Okay. Like hundred twenty-six dollars, I think, something like that. Right. Um. Yeah, you'll get money somehow. I assume it's a check. Yeah, that's that's what we got. That's what we got to figure out through Iowa State. So, um, thank thank you. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. I missed that fine print. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I have a question. How many dogs do we receive? Is it like one dog is used for the whole classroom, or is there like whatever the scale up was? Yeah. So when you said how many students, so it was one per ten. So the I think most everybody has is getting one. There's one. Except for maybe Jennifer Richmond is getting two by the Isaac Newton Christian Academy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it depends on how many students you have. I mean, yeah, when you when you went through the scale up application, then that's that's how we. Yeah. Yeah. We're told how many robotic kits. Um and then yeah. Um you know, will there be a way to purchase additional robots at a discount at all through or just do that straight with the vendor? Um let me reach out to the vendor. They've been pretty they've been um pretty uh um Receptive. Yeah. receptive yeah, uh, like educational yeah discounts. educational things and so on so we can we can uh, uh we check a coupon code or something yeah we can see if we yeah we can see if we get a coupon code or something um uh they typically yeah so yeah okay. we'll we'll check with them uh because we've we've been we have a lot of puppies that we've played with and bought and the different scales as they've been uh, um so thank you yeah they've been they've been very receptive this might sound like a selfish question um but julie rice and i work together and both in animosa will we both be receiving dogs or just because we work together we'll be receiving one um i think well, let me see I think you're both receiving one. Awesome. Thank you. One, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're the ones that have two. Yeah. I think they're each receiving one and then there's okay. another one that's receiving two. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We the this program is rather weird because the you applied through the through your local through your regional STEM hub, and then they just kind of said, Oh, uh, we're gonna give you this much money, and they really didn't tell us much about yeah. how they didn't tell us how many things there are they just gave us a total sum and we had to try to figure out yeah based on that so yeah. there's been a, sort of a lack of communication from the stem hubs yeah. to us <laughs> as to as to what's going on so other questions Um, so I guess something else to mention, you know, there's, um, there are people who are, who've been part of this project who will, who are, who are continuing. So there's more than just you when it comes time for the showcase. 
So if you've been wondering, there's not very many people. Um, um, most of our cyber, actually we had none of our, well, anybody who's currently part of it didn't, as far as we know, didn't apply for the scale up funding. Um, and our cyber people, they don't, you know, who are just focused on cyber, you know, they keep coming back every year or so. Um, so the cyber competition, they'll be probably on the teams we have this year. Oh gosh. Uh, at least eight, right? For innovate eight. IT. Yeah. Well, we didn't show up at the competition. We had more than eight, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. So ten, at least ten. Yeah. So I, my guess is this year the, the cyber competition will probably have close to twenty teams that will show up. Um, the other two venues are smaller, mm -hmm. um, but there'll be some other robotics and game design people who are not here today who have been part of the. Program. Oh. I did have another question. Um, we, you kind of talked about applying for the grant or not. This is our first time. What kind of costs would we be looking at for future years if we're able to continue this at our library uh, to keep the curriculum up to date? The only the only real cost you have is if you want more puppies. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then just transportation to if you come to yeah, if you come showcase. to if you come to showcase, you have that cost of, of getting here. But but the all the curricular materials that we, you know, well some of them we don't even produce. We just help organize. You know, the Unity mm -hmm. materials are all free. We organize those. Uh, the materials from the from the uh, uh, that go along with the dogs. Um, their stuff we'll put together, but the material from the company that makes the dogs is all free. Um, and then our cyber materials all free. So the curriculum materials will, will continue to be free. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so there's no other than if you want to get more more of the dogs. Um, Great. I, I really am hopeful that this will be a strong year for us as a, as building this. So I'd just love to see it continue. So thank you very much. Cool. Other questions? Um, so Lindsay will be sending out a PDF with some links in it, uh, the slide deck and the initial join discord uh, yes. link and again if you if there's issues with not getting in don't you know just email us at some point because it said this link only lasts for i think it's got five days left on five, it five days so, and we, we can make another one we always did. make more links at any time but yeah. it's some discord just does is the, the links are only valid for a short period of time so um But yeah, you may want to try. And and the person who said that they couldn't get to was that because you're using the heavyweight client, or did your school actually even block web access to Discord? It was just a block. It was completely blocked. We used the securely um, software, and we had a very hard time even working with our IT department, who had gone in and said, "Oh well." We changed it you're unblocked it's fine and it wasn't fine so it was just kind of a, a learning adventure for everybody in that regard so um maybe your it departments have a, a little bit more together than ours maybe i don't know but we just <laughs> had a very, very very hard time but we we finally got it okay yeah yeah so that's something you'll want to you want to check now obviously the student sitting at home yeah, on their home computers right. can can obviously get to it. I don't know what I don't know what lockdowns they have if they have bring their if they take their Chromebook home and um, um I think it is something else we potentially run in. I don't think anybody really blocks our site, but but in in uh, the cyber defense, it's it's a it's a website they have to go to. So hopefully the your IT departments haven't locked it down so hard that you can't get to to it if um but that's something the cyber people can will will be able to discover fairly quickly if they can get to the uh 
get to the playground. Um, and um, so we will be sending you information on the playground access. Um, for that, there's one username, password that you share with your students. Um, and so they all have the same username and password because they're all working in the same network. So they need to be able to see everything everybody's doing in, in your class. Um, and so they can't see, you know, one school can't see another schools, but but uh, it, it, it's easier if they all have the same username, password, because um, then they get to see everything everybody's doing. Cool. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise, we'll give you some time back. We just won't tell anybody we ended early, right? <laughs> Thank you very much.